Okay. See, my tobacco, uh, being a crusader against tobacco is like my uh, passion, yes. not profession. <laughs> my profession is pediatric cardiology. <laughs> I know, I know. For many of tobacco control uh, advocates as well as for researchers, it is like that. I know, I know. Whereas Chandar and you are all full-time workers. Uh, I'm also not full-time because of NCD. It gets divided in all the NCD risk factors. Okay. Bye. Good morning, ma'am. Um, good morning. Good morning, uh, Dr. Mani. Yeah, I'm Anupama. Uh, ah, I, I've met Dr. Vijay Lakshmi before. Yeah. No, everybody with such <laughs> bright faces, you know, so nice to see you. <laughs> Hi, Pratima. Oh. <laughs> good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Chandra. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, nice, uh, Professor Andrew. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Early morning for you. Yeah. Very nice day here in Durham. Sunny. Yeah, good morning. Hi, Vineet. New look, Pratima. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> <Pretty> nice. <laughs> Hi, Chandar. Hi, good morning. Thank good you so morning. much. Good to see you all. Thanks. So we are not at on live. We'll go shortly in a few seconds. So thanks to Madam for this excellent facility that we could comfortably sit. Can we go? Do you think? Can I start online? Dr. Chandar, uh, our slides will be centrally operated or you want us to share our screen? Monica, I had also requested uh, Chandar to allow us to move our own slides because... I can't hear you. Oh, he's muted. That's what we did at the test yesterday, Anupama. We just shared our own slides. Uh, Dr. Pratima, you are muted. We can't hear you. Sorry about that. Yeah, some people have sent in their slides and some people will be playing it from there. We share the host, uh, you know, we send Only? the host uh, sharing that you can play it. Good morning, respected uh, speakers of this webinar, and all the viewers joining from India and other parts of the country. Welcome, you all. So, uh, Consortium for Tobacco Free Karnataka has been doing it for 20 years now. Various programs, especially the World No Tobacco Day. Uh, it's a customary for us also to partner with It's Happening, partner with another organization and do this. We are happy this year. Uh, we are able to collaborate with the Public Health Foundation of India. And we have WHO joining us. Thanks to Madam uh, Dr. Pratima, who uh, I will introduce her later also. So consortium has a privilege of uh, the advice from three wise people uh, since 2000. And uh, three of them are on the board also. And uh, President uh, is our, uh, and then Dr. Pratima and uh, Dr. President, uh, President Dr. Ramesh Bilimaga and uh, Pratima ma'am and um, V3 founded consortium. And uh, last year we have registered formally, we felt the need to register. And then the four pillars emerged to support. 
guided by the three wise people, uh, Dr. Anupama, Dr. Satya from uh, public, uh, PHFI, the Bangalore office, and Dr. Bishu also, and the, uh, myself. The four of us are giving uh, regular day-to-day -day support for the activities of consortium. Uh, welcome you all again. Now I would like to request um, Dr. Ramesh, our president, to give us a presidential address. You can hear me now? Okay, okay, fine. Um, the, ever since uh, the WHO has uh, declared the No Tobacco Day in uh, 1988, the Indian Medical Association has been actively uh, connected with the connecting No Tobacco Day in one form or the other. But past another 10 years, and we formed a separate group called Consortium, and uh, at that time, Chandar and other people have joined us, and from the Indian Medical Association, we, we formed this group. And for the past 20 years, we have been conducting uh, this program to educate our uh, children and because they are the vulnerable group and which uh, they get lured into the habit of uh, tobacco. And uh, this year, and uh, Chanda has wisely uh, you know, designed the webinar and so that uh, you know, in the COVID days, and this will be the wise way to go about. The one important point that really uh, struck me uh, was, uh, if you really see the corona related deaths so far in the world and for the past five years or five months if you take it it's only a three lakh and a six two thousand but whereas the tobacco related one is 33 lakhs per year so almost 10 times that is occurring year after year year after year but yet the attention and by any of the government is not that really prominent and that is where the NGOs like our and the point comes into picture. And we must keep on striking and tell the importance of the people and particularly our younger children. So with that production, I uh, wish the program all the success and uh, request uh, to uh, Chandra to carry on with the program. And we have very eminent speakers today and a panel of speakers, and I'll be very happy to hear. Unmute, unmute uh, Chanda, you are, uh, unmute, you are. Hello. Yes, uh, with me, Dr. Pratima Nam is here. Uh, she's been a great support. This event was greatly supported by ma'am in many ways. And we would like to thank her. And uh, I would like to uh, request uh, uh, Dr. Vijayalakshmi, our vice president, before I call upon Dr. Anupama to give the background, uh, our brief address uh, to the audience, our vice president, Dr. I.B. Vijayalakshmi. Dr. Vijay. Yes, Vijay, yes, that's the one. Dr. Vijay. Oh. Oh, Dr. Vijay, okay. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, everybody. It's always been a pleasure to be working with the consortium because we care for the children and I love the children the most. And this year, the theme is protecting youth from industry manipulation and preventing them from tobacco usage. Uh, right from the time I was a president of Cardiological Society, I've been associated with this and Chandar. And why I'm very particular is tobacco is the only substance which destroys not only the heart, whole blood vessels. We have 60,000... Uh, Ma'am, come on video, please. Yeah. Now, come on, start the video. You're not on uh, visible video. Please start the video. You're audible. But your video, start the video, please. Oh, I don't know. 
prompt. It will prompt. You just have to click, ma'am. Sorry yeah. for that. You just have to click. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You are there. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a great day because we like-minded people always supported uh, to pr protect the lives of the children. And me being the pediatric cardiologist as a cardiological society president, I always supported consortium right from the beginning. And why this is important is everybody talks about the cancer and the other diseases. But what is important is tobacco is one substance which destroys the heart, the blood vessels all over the body. And apart from uh, diabetes, this is the only substance which destroys the whole the cardiovascular system. And as a result, even during the COVID, we have seen those who are tobacco smokers, they seem to have a higher mortality. And if our children, the youth, they take up tobacco, and if they get infected with uh, COVID, they are likely to have a more disastrous life and they are going to die much earlier. Hence, it is our bonded duty to protect and preserve the precious lives of children. And hence, you know, nearly 25% of the deaths due to heart attacks are due to the tobacco. And this is a great initiative. In spite of the coronavirus uh, tragic thing, we are taking up the issue further. And I wish all the best for all the speakers and the whole effort uh, despite the uh, lockdown and wish you all the best. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, yes, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Anupama, one of the four pillars of consortium right now uh, in carrying out a day-to-day -day activity. So I would like to request her to give a background to this uh, event and also consortium. Welcome, Dr. Anupama. Uh, thanks, Chanda. Uh, so I'm Dr. Anupama Shetty, and uh, I lead uh, the CSR initiatives at uh, Narana Health. And I'm very honored to be a part of the webinar today. I look forward to hearing from uh, the wonderful panel of experts. Uh, and uh, I just thought I'd give a brief overview of how Narana Health is actually engaged in uh, this space. Um, so Narayana Health, through its various social initiatives as well as CSR campaign, has been focusing on non-communicable diseases, whether it's been promotive, preventive services, as well as behavioral change communication activities. NCDs are especially important from the purview of adolescents now and in the future. According to WHO, 67% of the premature deaths and 33% of the disease burden amongst adults is due to behavioral patterns that emerge during adolescence. And therefore, it is imperative for us to focus on adolescent risk behaviors. Adolescence has to be the foundation for a healthy transition to adulthood. And therefore, with this aim, Narana Health uh, CSR, we undertook a pilot, uh, it's called the Safe School Program, in collaboration with the Consortium for, uh, for Tobacco Free Karnataka. Chandar and uh, Dr. Ramesh, sir, as well as Pratima Ma'am, have been absolute uh, pillars for us when we took up the Safe School uh, pilot. And uh, this program was aimed at improving awareness towards uh, tobacco, alcohol, substance abuse, as well as assess mental health amongst the adolescents. Uh, this action research program was conducted, uh, in fact, across 28 government as well as private schools in both urban and rural blocks of Bangalore. Validated uh, uh, questionnaires, which were used previously in the Indian context, were pre-tested, administered across approximately 6,000 students from 7th standard to 12th standard. Several domains have been assessed, but um, specifically with reference to World No Tobacco Day, I would uh, like to share some of the uh, preliminary results. 6% of the male students who had been surveyed had experienced smoking between 7 to 16 years of age. 15% of the students perceived smoking was associated with a macho image. Around 2% of the students, male students, had a history of consumption of drugs. 49% of the students surveyed had their first experience of alcohol at home. We are learning, we're still learning from this program, but what we believe is that the Safe School program has a lot of convergence with the objectives of World No Tobacco Day. It has a lot of potential, and we intend to implement uh, this program across the state. And I'm sure that uh, with the valuable insights which we will be gaining from the eclectic panel of experts, 
uh, it will help us to strengthen our intervention strategy as well as goals. So with this, I just thought I'd keep it brief and I'd like to hand over the pattern now to Chandar and uh, I look forward to listening in from the experts. Thank you so much. Dr. Anupama, uh, I would like to yeah. now uh, introduce uh, Mr. Albert. He's one of our positive speaker. Uh, he's an ex-addict. He's also running a de-addiction center. So in all our programs uh, among, uh, for our young people, we invite him to speak. Uh, we have a brief video from Albert now. Listen to his message. My dad was an army officer, so we grew up with a lot of army discipline at home. Most parents in India want a boy as a child. My family was different. They wanted a girl. I wouldn't have had a problem with that if my dad didn't tell me that when I was very small. He said, we didn't want you. We wanted a girl. And I felt so rejected. And so I tried to do everything that I did to my best. I was good at studies. I was always a distinction student. I was good at every extracurricular activity that the school had. Good at uh, music, quiz, elocution, good at sports. At one point I ran for Karnataka. And I came home with the cup and my dad looked at it and said, Ha, huh, your school has gone so bad that you should get the prize completely shattered me. I was broken. And so I decided to become rebellious and began accepting challenges. One of it came when I was in school. My friends posed a challenge if I could smoke a full cigarette in class when my teacher was there. I did it. And I thought it was cool. And so I continued on with smoking cigarettes. Soon I graduated, not in studies. But I graduated from smoking to alcohol, from alcohol to drugs. And before I even knew it, I was an injecting drug user. And my drug use was very different because when I had money, I would use the best. When I didn't have, I would use whatever came my way. And so I was a multiple drug user. All I could think about was where I would get my next fix from. Sometimes it was not possible. I just couldn't afford it. Then, it's very difficult. I go through something called as withdrawals and it's very painful. I used to feel all my joints paining, feel nausea, feel giddy. And very difficult. Because there were times that I've even tried committing suicide. There were times that uh, I remember this once at home. There's this beam in my room. And I tried to hang myself on it. And the whole thing came down and I fell down. My life was a complete mess. To support my drugs, I would steal, I would manipulate, I would say lies. And I got into a lot of trouble. And so my dad threw me out of home. Lived with friends for a while. And eventually I was on the street. And I remember this one day, I slept in Johnson Market with just newspaper to cover me from cold Bangalore. It was very difficult. And one day, I saw this friend of mine coming towards me. Uh, this guy used to copy from me in school. I thought I'm going to get something. He saw me, he turned and walked away. And as I looked at myself, I was so dirty. And I would always wear black and black. And I'm sure I looked pretty bad. And don't blame him for walking away. But that's when I asked a question, what happened to me? Why am I like this? Suddenly I remembered something that I'd learned as a child. A song. The song was this. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. I prayed my very first prayer to God. God, do you really love me? God gave me such a peace in my heart, with which I knew that He does love me. And so I prayed my second prayer. I said, get me out of all this mess. And then I remember walking out from Johnson Market into the park in front and made a bonfire of all that was there in my pocket. I remember very clearly a foreign lighter just burst. And then as I walked home, mom was waiting at the door like she knew I was going to come back. Dad was very still very skeptical. He, he 
thought this is one more of my tricks. It took him a while. But the changes were slow and evident. I cut my hair first, began to sleep on time, eat on time. And one of those days I got up very early around 6.30. To me that was very different from what it was earlier. Dad noticed it, came and gave me a hug. I felt such a peace in my heart. Like a peace that I never felt before. I knew that something was different. I knew that this is going to change things for me. I went back to college and passed out as the best student of the college I went to. Today, I have two master's degrees. Never thought that I would have a family. I have a lovely family with two wonderful children. I'm really happy now. I should have been dead or maybe in jail, but the fact that I'm alive, I believe has a purpose for my life. And from there, birthed a dream to start an NGO, to work with those who are struggling with different kinds of addictions. And so we started an organization called Abayam. Now the word Abayam is a Sanskrit word. It means freedom and shelter. And we have all kinds of people that come in for rehabilitation. One of the things that happens in the home is a compulsory guitar class. And as a result, we now have a band that travels around singing songs of hope and freedom. My dad was an army officer, so we grew up with a lot of... Oh. Now I would like to introduce the key speaker of the webinar. You'll be surprised to listen to him because the whole campaign evolves around uh, this part, these people, young people. So, over to now. Very, very good morning to everybody. My name is Aditya Hari. I am in the 12th grade and I study in Delhi Public School, Bangalore. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how tobacco companies are influencing the lives of the younger generation of the world to its selfish life. The Consortium for Tobacco Free Karnataka has been persistently working towards the protection of children for a brighter and healthier future. The adolescent age is the peak of the human brain to experiment and be so. We just restart the video because it wasn't very clear. Just play it again. Adinali Public School, Bangalore. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how to have companies that are influencing the lives of the young grade and I started grade and I started in the public school back home. Let's play it. Very, very good morning to everybody. My name is Alpati Hari. I am in the 12th grade and I started in the public school back home. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how the Marco companies are influencing the lives of the young generation of the world to its selfish life. The Consortium for Tobacco Free Karnataka has been persistently working towards protection. Let's go for, yeah, let's go to the next Okay, we'll get back. The technological issue, we'll, get, we'll come back to his video. Uh, now we'll move on uh, to other uh, program. Other, uh, the consortium is without its partners. We have uh, so many partners in the state uh, who are working with children who support us. So we would like to, uh, we have a special message from them, the, our partners, and also uh, other people who are primarily we wanted, uh, student, teachers, and parents to also to say, uh, speak in this conference. So we have a message from them. 
start with the video at the end. Okay, we have some difficulty. Sorry for the inconvenience with uh, videos. Uh, we'll play the videos in the end. By then, they'll set it up. We'll move on to the main uh, program of the webinar. I would like to introduce our first speaker, Ms. Vineet Jimunish. She's from the WHO. She's a national professional officer for the WHO country office, India. So Vineet is no stranger to consortium. So twice in the past, uh, we've been uh, regularly, she knows what we are doing. Uh, WHO supported twice the campaign that we carried on in Karnataka. We, we are thankful to WHO. Once we collaborated with the Nimans and other occasions with the Jaydava Institute of Cardiology when uh, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi was there. So you've been a great support, Vinit. It's a privilege that uh, we are able to have you for this webinar. Thank you for joining us. Over to Vinit. Um, thank you so much, Chandar. It's indeed an honor to be with all of you today. Um, every year we commemorate World No Tobacco Day um, all in person, but I think this is a very unique one. And thank you so much for bringing so many people together today. Um, yes, we have been uh, uh, collaborating with the consortium the last few years. And I must say that it has been always um, a very good uh, outcome with this collaboration. Um, with that, I would quickly like to uh, shift to the World No Tobacco Day theme. Um, I don't know if you're all aware, uh, the World Health Organization started uh, the World No Tobacco Day back uh, for the first time in 1987. And since 1988, so for the last um, almost 30 plus years, uh, the World No Tobacco Day has been uh, uh, commemorated. I have had the honor to be part of the last 20 World No Tobacco Days. And uh, why a World No Tobacco Day? Every day should be a uh, World No Tobacco Day, right? But I think the purpose of a World No Tobacco Day is to raise awareness about a particular theme. Uh, which is which is currently you know plaguing our society and WHO always picks up a, a specific themes which member states and um, the civil society in these uh, countries uh, tend to focus on. If you look back at the various World No Tobacco Days, 2001 was um, secondhand smoke exposure, and uh, this was highlighted. And by 2008. Um, government of India banned uh, smoking in public places in this country. 2003 was tobacco-free films and that kick-started the idea. We are one of the biggest um, film industries globally and it kick-started the idea of, you know, exposure to kids uh, through movies and uh, uh, so on. India started working in that direction and 2012, we became one of the first few countries to actually ban uh, tobacco use in movies. So just to explain to you what World No Tobacco Day is about. And this year, the theme is again, very, very um, relevant to India. We are uh, 1.3 billion plus people of which 50% are actually youth under the age of 25. So we are a huge market for the tobacco industry. Um, we are also a growing economy, so there is um, money with youth available uh, for these products. And most importantly, we are one of the countries where tobacco products, indigenous tobacco products like um, beeries and smokeless are available at very cheap prices, starting from two, three rupees, going up to seven, eight rupees, you can get uh, a lot of uh, tobacco products. So uh, with that, uh, uh, in the background, I would like to bring to you a brief presentation on the theme of World No Tobacco Day this year and how uh, the tobacco industry manipulates the youth and how we can protect them. Chandra, I would like to do uh, the slides on my own. If you could just bring my slides on, please. Or can I play it from here? Yes. You can run it from your set, from your... Uh, Computer beneath. Okay, let me try. Can you all see it? No. Is it visible? Just one moment. Can you share your screen? Have you shared your screen? Share screen. Oh, one sec. 
shall we play it from there? Will it be quicker? Let's see, let's see, slides are here. Yeah, she had my slides, yeah. So you can just bring on the presentation, please. Slides. Vineet, can you just share your screen? Yeah, okay, I'll share screen. Yeah, please share your screen. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Just maximize it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sorry, is it maximized? I'm not very sure. And when the top view option is there, from there you can view full screen. Left top view. Go to the view. Top, top. Go to the view icon, and do full screen. Top In the left, left side. side. View. Side. view. Yeah, view on your left top. Left top of your screen. View. Yeah, next to it. Yes, and full, full screen. screen mode. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry. Sorry, one sec. I'm doing this for the first time here. Just give me a moment, please. Sorry, this is not working and I need to... So we will we will play from here with it. So we'll do it here. Yeah, just just give me one minute. I think I'll be able to manage. I just don't know how to go back. We just need to press the up. So we'll change. We'll change with it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yes, you go. So, um, the theme of World on Tobacco Day this year is based on the fact that 80 lakh people, 8 million people um, uh, die each year due to tobacco use, uh, 7 million due to direct tobacco use, and another 1 million due to secondhand smoke. So, because, next slide please, because these 80 lakh people die every year, it is very important for the tobacco industry to find new users. So in order to replace these 80 lakh people, the tobacco industry uh, targets young people. Next slide. What are the ta uh, tactics that the tobacco industry uses? Next slide. So I was just talking about World No Tobacco Day 2003. So one of the primary ways uh, that the tobacco industry targets youth is uh, through direct advertising, advertising uh, in entertainment media. Um, a lot of, uh, even though many countries have banned this, still, uh, you know, they do try to pro put the tobacco, uh, weave the tobacco story uh, and usage into the script of the movie or the television series. Um, later, perhaps Monica will uh, speak more on this. Uh, but uh, even in India, even though we have ba uh, banned tobacco use in movies, uh, the streaming platforms are, uh, you know, like Netflix, Amazon, there's a huge amount of tobacco usage and even product placement where brands are actually shown. Uh, in the movies uh, and, and on television today. The other way they do it is that they uh, display in, in, in shops, they display uh, the tobacco products absolutely at the children's eye level. So that uh, where the children's uh, attention goes, which is near toys, sweets or sugary drinks, the tobacco products are placed uh, very prominently there to attract children. What they also uh, uh, do is that uh, they make a lot of uh, memes and product ads uh, which are very attractive to young children and may and normalize tobacco use at a very early age. Next slide, please. 
social media you know our generation we didn't we 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 while we've learned social media the next generation is born with social media you know their life is more on the social media platforms than in the real world so the tobacco industry understands this very well and they use social media platforms uh, popular with kids like insta facebook snapchat whatever works at that point and the popular uh, young people actually are uh, supported to promote these products and you know very innocuously put pictures of themselves very attractive pictures of them trying new tobacco products and using so because there are advertising bans they are using all these innovative means of getting to young people next slide another thing they do is uh, that they try to promote tobacco products at popular events and they even distribute free samples and promotional material wherever children are uh, in fact in india if you know you are aware that uh, you know otherwise tobacco direct and indirect advertising is not allowed but even so when you are watching a cricket match you will see Uh, very large uh, hoardings of uh, tobacco products in a very surrogate manner these are actually pan masala products uh, which which also have uh, co-branded tobacco products uh, very prominent prominently advertised uh, during uh, sports events so this is another way they uh, very innocuously try to put their brands everywhere where children are going to see them and sports are popular with young people next slide please events uh, so as i mentioned sports events are one but there are also a lot of social events and you know music shows and other things uh, where also tobacco brands are prominently put um, they uh, even fund parties so a lot of there is evidence that a lot of um, you know kids are actually uh, involved by the tobacco industry to throw these small parties where kids come and uh, then uh, they are introduced to different kinds of tobacco products and the children seem to think they are going to a friends party but what they do not know is that these are sometimes sponsored uh, by the industry uh, they also offer apprenticeships scholarships for students uh, and sponsorship of uh, of course major sporting events which i already spoke about next slide children love flavored products so uh, and it's not a surprise that when you see all the hookah products and other you know uh, such products they all come in chocolate flavor strawberry flavor there are there's a whole host of flavors and trust me these are not for adults uh, or or like these are all made only to target young children to make tobacco use more palatable for them because these strong smells and the foul taste would not otherwise appeal to children unless it was subtly disguised by these uh, wonderful flavors they also try to sell kiddie packs uh, you know smaller packs and single sticks now in india if you see um, uh, in smoking products cigarettes 67% are sold as single sticks so because children have a smaller uh, pocket Uh, they cannot buy uh, full packs and sometimes uh, you know smaller packs or uh, single use products are what are used to to uh, get these children into their fold next slide please next slide so tobacco and covid now uh, i think uh, some of the earlier speakers uh, very eloquently mentioned that uh, you know we are all aware that tobacco makes the entire body every body part weaker and less immune to fight any disease especially smokers whose lungs are already damaged and also uh, people uh, children who are exposed to second hand smoke and they are already uh, very vulnerable so uh, uh, when the virus attacks so the virus can work actually in three ways if you see with tobacco one is in our country a large population almost uh, 20 crore people are uh, chewing tobacco and when they spit out the uh, tobacco products after chewing them 
this is a huge uh, threat to spread of all infectious diseases including covid the other thing is that when the smoker smokes a he has to take off his mask and b he has to bring his hand to his mouth even the chewer for that matter the biggest uh, used tobacco product in our country is actually khani very few of us know that and khani is produced uh, is made by actually the person i don't know if you've seen they actually rub their their hands onto the khani and then put it the lime mixture and put it into their mouths so all tobacco products induce uh, touching the mouth and uh, hands and this is another way of transferring uh, the infection and of course for tobacco users their bodies are already uh, damaged and vulnerable and if you do happen to get covid uh, there is a much higher chance of going into the um, severe or critical category of covid patients next slide please so just uh, you know government of india has been very alert on this uh, ministry of health in fact has come out with some excellent uh, uh, social media messages uh, on uh, spitting spitting in public places and many governments have taken action to actually uh, ban uh, spitting and it was already there but i think it's been reiterated so um uh, this this connection is is very and uh, uh, you know very intense and you know the tobacco industry across uh, various countries was trying to uh, declare uh, that you know tobacco is a essential item so as to say and that even during lockdown it should be available uh, but most governments have not allowed that and it is a demerit good and uh, it can, it is not an essential good by any standards next slide please so what are our key messages tobacco and related industries have to keep finding new consumers because their consumers are dying so they will uh, poach on the younger generation they spend over 8 billion usd on advertising every year even in countries where advertising is banned uh, they they find ways of reaching young people and the 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 fact is that uh, you know e cigarettes have been highly uh, promoted among young people but and and, and maybe as a safer alternative but uh, children who use e cigarettes are twice as likely to smoke cigarettes later in their life shisha smoke uh, these hookah bars are so popular in our country now uh, kids don't know that this smoke is toxic it contains substances that cause cancer and smokeless tobacco of course is highly addictive and uh, damaging to death next slide next slide so who's call to action uh, to various segments of uh, our society are uh, for celebrity and social influencers they should refuse any form of sponsorship unfortunately we have seen some of the um, very well known role models film stars tv stars actually promoting tobacco products especially smokeless tobacco products uh, which are very uh, surreptitiously made to look like mouth fresheners and you know uh, like but uh, the consumer doesn't know the difference and they are actually promoting these products and uh, this i think uh, the 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 celebrities and social influencers need to be informed about social media companies they are the ones on whose platforms all this information is available to young people and they need to be more responsible they need to be more alert and ban this kind of uh, promotion on their uh, platforms entertainment media companies as i shared before uh, you know all of these streaming platforms they are all the 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 their entire content is full of tobacco use and they should pledge to not to depict tobacco or e-cigarette use parents and relatives they play a very important role they need to educate you know i i i have a very interesting uh, example one, one day you know we were with some relatives and it was his daughter's 18th birthday and uh, he says oh you know i'm trying to find a very beautiful hookah for my daughter and you know this is a very educated man and it comes from a you know uh, fairly well Uh, uh you know known background knowledge everything and yet 
what is this uh, thing of gifting an 18 year old girl uh, with a hookah clearly there is a lot of misinformation parents are not informed that this hookah is not some herbal chocolate strawberry flavored uh, thing that they they are make, in, encouraging their child to use uh, nurses and health practitioners you know um, they, they are constantly coming in touch with children uh, especially in the pediatric um, segment and they need to provide the children adolescents and their parents with accurate information next slide schools schools are where uh, children pick up a lot of their uh, tobacco use from their peers they even watch their uh, teachers so india of course uh, has a very st uh, strong guideline of tobacco use uh, in schools and i think uh, this this guideline needs to be more stringently followed uh, by the schools and uh, they should also prohibit representatives from tobacco and related companies from speaking at school events because a lot of tobacco companies have expanded uh, into other products like food and fashion and a lot of products and uh, as long as they are from the same corporate house i think schools should be very selective in who they allow uh, access to these young minds youth groups um, a lot of youth groups uh, work in this direction and uh, i think it's very important for youth groups to constantly to also be sensitized and constantly educate their peers and last but not the least the national and local governments governments of course are uh, doing a lot uh, the who framework convention for tobacco control provides the framework to the governments and and the legitimacy to implement uh, these laws uh, but they must the national and local governments must focus on protecting children and adolescents from this kind of manipulation by the tobacco industry next slide please these are the beautiful children whom we are all together here to talk about and protect their beautiful smiles cannot be marred by uh, tobacco use and you know we all grew up thinking that you know we were not given en enough information and uh, thought uh, perhaps that this is a very glamorous activity but today uh, we cannot allow another generation to be duped by the tobacco industry and to profit from these beautiful smiles for their own uh, uh, you know increasing their uh, profit based and their consumer base so today who is calling to all the people in india and across the world to shout out for tobacco awaaz uthao and call out this manipulation that the tobacco industry is continuing to do globally and in india thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share the world no tobacco day message with you thank you thank you vinith uh we wish i will if we can save some time maybe later in the end we can take some questions that's my request to the speakers our uh, next speaker we would like to go on to our next speaker she needs no introduction for the larger audience on online i need to introduce ma'am quickly uh dr pratima murthy ma'am is a professor of psychiatry she is currently the head of uh, department of psychiatry above all i'm i just wanted to say something yes, i'm proud to introduce uh, ma'am as a, one of the co-founders of the consortium for tobacco free karnataka uh before ma'am comes on line uh, dr andrew russell wants uh, to say something urgently no sorry i didn't i it was just clapping i was just clapping um, the last speaker <laughs> using the reactions tab Thank you. Thank you, Professor Andrew. Over to Max. Thanks, Andrew. I know there are so many emote. There are so many things that people need to get used to with yes. the digital platform. So you know, I think we're, we're all learning. learning. We're all learning. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I think we need to really set the platform for what I'm going to say in terms of you know why children are the target of the tobacco industry. I'm going to really uh, you know answer this question with a few points. first of all the fact that children are vulnerable to tobacco use the fact that this vulnerability doesn't come after the after they are born they're actually vulnerable even before they get in to the world and the fact that children 
see what adults do and children do what adults do. And therefore, to actually understand that adult behavior and the influences of industry in adults definitely has a consequence on children as well. And how does the industry use this particular vulnerability uh, in the general public and particularly among children? Vinik has already alluded to that, but I'll just go into a few of these uh, you know, issues in a little bit more detail. And finally, the long arms of industry, the fact that it's not just limited to you know, just recycling of products, but there are a lot of other implications, particularly in a country like ours. My disclosure is I too was once a child. Vinit showed those lovely pictures and I think you know, we were all like that at one point in time. And one of the biggest treats when we were growing up and that persisted I think way into the 80s and the 90s was these, were these sweet cigarettes. I remember the joy it used to give us to put one of those sweet cigarettes in our mouth and pretend, you know, we were, we were as cool, perhaps, as we thought everybody else who smoked was. And those rings of smoke were also as alluring. And I think that's something that continues to date. The fact that cigarettes, uh, you know, any form of smoking is actually see, still seen as an allurement, both among adults as well as children. I mentioned that children are exposed to tobacco smoke far earlier than we think. This is actually a project that my colleague, Dr. Prabha, and uh, some of us are, have been involved with, which really looks at the effects of secondhand smoking on, by adults. So if adults are being manipulated into smoking, the effect of adult smoking also has a serious impact on the unborn child. And this is really a message from the unborn child that the father should not be smoking around the unborn child. And the fact that we need to see how some of these influences uh, impact children at a very young age. The other thing is that adult behavior is constantly being watched, observed, and sub subsequently learned by children who think it's something very exciting, that it's a way of relieving distress, that there's something very adult about doing this, and therefore, you see that children are starting tobacco use earlier and earlier. Of course, in 2010, there was this thing about a two-year-old child, uh, you know, in, the, in Southeast Asia actually smoking. And the fact that the child was perhaps one of the youngest to actually go into rehabilitation because the child got addicted to it. So we know that over the years, there is what is called the cohort effect. Younger and younger children have started using tobacco uh, very, very early. Vineet mentioned the point of sale advertising. So this is clearly one of the tactics that are used by industry. And this is very simple. They do not spend any money on point of sale advertising. These are so alluring. They're next to potato chips in a panwala shop. And it's very easy to reach out to them. And to date, in fact, this afternoon, we're releasing a report for the Karnataka, you know, for the state tobacco control cell. And one of the things that we looked at was point of sale advertising. And it's still something that continues and is a very, very cheap publicity for all the various tobacco products. Again, Vineet mentioned the exposure to the media. And we know that the internet now, Instagram, you know, Twitter, various things are actually you know, very, very easy ways of, of giving pro-tobacco those messages, as are indeed TVs and movies. The WHO has done some wonderful work on actually showing how much tobacco use is depicted, particularly smoking is depicted and it is a hero message that is kind of linked with the tobacco use, making it very attractive. We know that there is sponsorship, there are celebrity endorsements. Uh, there are several things that tobacco companies use to actually promote tobacco. There is also, the, again, something that Vineet mentioned, bubble gums, which are cherry flavored, uh, and they have peppermint flavors. They have sleek designs and attractive products. What is portrayed is that some of the products are less harmful or alternatives to smoking. I showed you the e-cigarettes in the past. Fortunately, they have been banned in India. Having vending machines to actually sell products and making them very easily available. And of course, taking on the public when there is a public interest movement to ban tobacco, having litigation to, you know, to say it's a person's right to be able to use tobacco and to advertise and so on. And this is endless. So this is a continuing uh, you know, confrontation between industry and the public 
you know, uh, in, in ways of de dealing with this. And unfortunately, what happens with tobacco as a legal drug also moves to cannabis. So we know that in some countries, there are gum gummy bears which have cannabis in them, which are also very attractive to children. So th that goes on and on. We also know that the industry, it's also the manufacturing industry that uses women, uses children, and that many of them are exposed to handling tobacco and green tobacco sickness, as well as other kinds of you know, nutritional problems. Uh, you know, and so there's a close link between the industry, poverty, manufacture of tobacco, and health as well. Finally, we know that tobacco is a gateway drug. We know along with alcohol, cannabis, and prescription drugs that more and more people are turning to these. And therefore, many, many drug users, in fact, we saw the video that Albert uh, talked about, where he talked about starting with tobacco use and starting with smoking. And that starts very early, and there is progression to other drugs as well. And there is, of course, we know that tobacco is one drug used by a lot of young people who progress to other drugs. And illegal drug users often start with tobacco. The amount of tobacco use is also related to other drug use. We know that tobacco, like all other drugs, is an addictive drug, and that there is a dramatic association between other drugs. What I want to really focus on before I end is something that the tobacco industry has very carefully manipulated. Asking young people to smoke as a symbol that the person is no longer a mother's child, that the individual is tough, an adventurer, you know, and this, as soon as, this, as the psychological symbolism begins to reduce, the pharmacological addiction effect of tobacco takes over, and then the companies don't have to bother. So their interest is in initiating the use. And this is not something new. It's been going on for the last four or five decades. Sponsorship, you know, especially cultural programs, you know, cultural programs and college events, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, not only that, using symbols to advertise other things. You know, a farmer, for example, who is so, you know, grateful because of help with his agricultural produce, and that is linked to a company which also manufactures tobacco. Uh, we all know that the addiction, I talked about the companies just needing to initiate it and then moving on to addiction. Tobacco acts in the same area where all kinds of drugs act. This is on the reward pathway in the brain. And we know that nicotine is as addictive or even more addictive than illicit drugs like cocaine or stimulants. Uh, or you know, So it's very, very important that young people understand that this is the reason why people get hooked on. So it's obviously not safe even to start tobacco use because of the risk of tobacco. And tobacco is a deadly business for people who are involved in this business and for young people who might get absorbed and sucked into this business as well. And I know Chandar's video was supposed to be played, and we're going to play it in the end, but I think we need champions among young people to actually denormalize tobacco in society and say we are better off without tobacco. We don't need tobacco for relaxation. We don't need it to reduce our stress. We have other ways of doing it. And actually, children as agents of change in society is something that we need to look at. So I leave you with those thoughts. And we can always come back to questions and answers later. And for all the young people watching, choose life, not tobacco. Thank you. And thank you for an excellent presentation. We cannot expect more than this on this occasion. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to the next speaker, Dr. Monica Arora, currently the head and the director of health promotion division of the Public Health Foundation of India. I know about Dr. Monica for the last 20 years. She may not knew me personally, but the f when I was developing my, developing my passion in tobacco control, the first material I got was the Ridaishan produce, the tobacco facts. That was really helpful for me to start my passion in tobacco. Over to Dr. Monica. Thank you very much, uh, Tender, for reminding me about tobacco facts. That that was my first publication in tobacco. <laughs> so very first for all of us. Uh, Public Health Foundation of India is very honored to partner with uh, the consortium today for this event. And um, well, no tobacco day, as Vineet mentioned, for many of us has been an occasion that we all have been associated with for quite a few years. Um, I have been working in tobacco control for 24 years. And 
<clears throat> most rewarding of all the research in tobacco control has been the work we have done with mobilizing youth. And I was very, very happy to see that on the program, we have a youth speaker. Uh, some of the earlier World No Tobacco Day events I have attended in the last uh, two weeks, it was very unfortunate. We were talking about youth, but only experts were speaking. Thanks, you. Uh, it was only experts speaking in those events, not giving platform to youth. And I sincerely feel that we cannot do any policy making or programming for adolescents and youth without their engagement. So very happy to see this on uh, your program. And um, I hope we can play the student's video again sometime during the day. So I'll start with my presentation. And uh, uh, Chandar, if uh, we can play it from your end. OK. OK. So I will talk on protecting adolescents from industry tactics from uh, India perspective. Uh, Vineet has given an excellent international perspective. Next slide, please. Okay. So I would like to start by saying that what is the tobacco industry? And uh, this particular publication came to my attention as I was doing current research on tobacco and COVID. And it has been equated that the tobacco cigarette pandemic is like COVID-19 in slow motion. It says cigarette pandemic because it is an international publication, but for our context, it is tobacco pandemic, including both smoking and smokeless forms. There is a flattening of curve in some countries. Uh, developed countries have started seeing a decline in uh, smoking rates. However, uh, countries like India are seeing a very slow decline in smoking, but smokeless, we are not seeing any change. So uh, that is where we need to step up our efforts. And also uh, the fact that tobacco industry has been extraordinarily successful at conditioning the public and the policy maker to accept it. So they have been very successful into accepting it as a normal industry. They have manipulated all of us. They have manipulated science. They have manipulated governments, youth, everyone. And uh, even though the science is clear, they always challenge science and tobacco control measures in the court. Uh, uh, and the government is always having difficult time to enforce these legislation. Next slide. So quickly giving some facts, um, it was uh, estimated that smoking starts in early 20s. Uh, this was 1997. Gradually, we started seeing that age of initiation declined. And in India, some of our work in urban slums in Delhi actually has shown that the age of initiation is as young as six years because of smokeless tobacco use. They start using it without even knowing that it is a smokeless tobacco product because it comes as a pan masala and also as a tobacco product with the same brand name. Also, nine out of 10 people who smoke their first cigarette before the age of 18 continue this habit into adulthood. So the first experience, if it is a positive experience, then it leads to continuous use. And that is where flavors play a very important role. And I'll uh, talk about it more, uh, though Vineet also touched upon it. But something that uh, even Dr. Pratima mentioned, that adolescent brain is particularly vulnerable to addictive effects of nicotine and nicotine addiction, because the brain continues to develop up to the age of 25 years, and nicotine does interfere with formation of synapses. And uh, Dr. Murthy can explain us more about it. But it is absolutely criminal if we get our children to initiate tobacco products. We let the industry to do it to our children and damage their brain growth and development. Next slide. So I will be touching upon a few uh, issues. These are various strategies in which uh, tobacco industry attracts youth, but I will give examples of our research. 
uh, they do play with the content, giving flavors to the tobacco and nicotine products to make it popular among youth. They do product designing, sleek designs. For women, they would introduce uh, sleek cigarettes uh, to give an effect that this is especially for women, make it attractive. They give misleading messages by saying it is uh, reduced harm, uh, even with e-cigarettes. The whole notion about 95% being safe uh, is a message they are trying to project. Also, celebrity endorsements that they bring in for their products is something which promotes use among youth. Point of sale, Dr. Murthy talked about. Also, sale of single uh, cigarette sticks, so that definitely aids in experimentation because it is cheaper. So the cost is reduced by providing a single cigarette. Indirect marketing through movies, uh, advertising, indirect advertising, promotions, sponsorships, and all those methods. And also attractive marketing at venues which are frequented by young people. For example, cafes where hookahs are now introduced. Next slide. These are various attractive new products which are now available. We have graduated from e-cigarettes to its variations as e-hookahs, then vape pens. Uh, we have got mods, uh, also pod-based e-cigarettes. We have heat not burn. So there are so many variations which are available in the market. And most important for us is to understand that why flavors uh, become so important, even though India has banned e-cigarettes, but even within cigarettes, the flavors actually, they improve the taste and reduces the harshness of tobacco products. They mask the unpleasant odor and deliver a pleasant aroma, increasing the smoothness to smoke. That is the whole intent to attract youth to initiate flavored tobacco. Also flavors have something like high curiosity to try factor, which creates the false impression that tobacco product is less harmful. So we have to be careful on why industry is introducing these flavors. And a study from India has very clearly shown uh, that 24% of advertisements around schools were that of flavored tobacco. And 92% of flavored advertisements included menthol. So, this is happening in India. It is not that it is an international concept. Flavored cigarettes are available. And also for e-cigarettes, even though we have banned, we have to monitor what the usage is. Our recent research, which is about to get published, is actually showing that despite the ban, there is use among children and adolescents. Also, the Global Adult Tobacco Survey clearly showed that the Awareness of e-cigarette was, was highest. It was 4% among the adolescents. It wasn't among adults. So this product, if it is uh, introduced in the market as cessation product, then why is it that it is available and awareness is higher among the adolescents? Next slide, please. This is an earlier uh, study which was done by our group, uh, which looked at uh, e-cigarettes availability uh, in the market before it was banned. So very clearly you can see that monitoring at point of sale for 42 point of sale located within 100 yards of educational institution and e-cigarettes were available there. They were being sold to minors. They had no warning boards against sale to minors. They had attractive display of e-cigarettes and they did market e-cigarettes uh, in flavors. Also, online sale is happening and social media is the biggest promoter. Next slide. Uh, we have seen recently the social uh, networking sites have a lot of uh, offers of home delivery for cigarettes. And that is another way that youth can get cigarettes without getting their age checked. And we all know that uh, age proofs are not asked in India when they have to access cigarettes. This is an example uh, which was published in Caravan on uh, youth uh, brand ambassadors. These were Mar Marlboro brand ambassadors. It was a college program where a PR company of this brand, uh, they selected college students and 
gave them contracts uh, giving a amount to recruit their friends to start smoking and just they had to do as reporting is click a picture of their friends who were offered free cigarettes to start smoking and send it to the pr agency this program started with 7 to 8 uh, ambassadors in 2009 and was scaled up to 60 youth ambassadors in delhi and mumbai by 2010 so this is how the industry is actually defying the advertising ban and how they are going and doing direct marketing to college students next slide here is a result which very clearly shows in a cohort study how children who are more exposed to tobacco advertising are more than Uh, two times more likely to be tobacco users the progression to become tobacco users is much higher if they are exposed to tobacco advertisements promotion sponsorships so if you see this was a, a group randomized trial we did follow up non users at baseline who were exposed to uh, tobacco advertising were receptive uh, to tobacco promotional items and when we looked at their progression it was two times higher Uh, we did. We saw that it was higher among boys who were highly receptive versus non-receptive boys. Uh, this was after we adjusted for all the correlates. Next slide, please. Similarly, we have seen when children are more exposed to uh, tobacco use exposure in Bollywood movies versus those who are less exposed. uh again the risk is uh, more than double uh, for those uh, ever tobacco users compared to those in the lowest exposure and there was a dose response relationship even though this was a cross sectional study we could see an association next slide this is our recent study uh, done on streaming platforms we selected 10 series on netflix and amazon which were popular among youth and the study revealed that there was uh, 70% of the series depicted tobacco imagery and it was very very high exposure uh, we had uh, the variation was having zero scenes to 16052 uh, scenes in one of the uh, series which was uh, coded under this study so with the lockdown we all know the viewership of streaming platform ott has increased uh, exponentially which means more exposure of youth to these tobacco use scenes because they are also watching these series and similar studies have also been available from us where uh, similar uh, we also followed the same methodology which was used by university of uh, uh, south california when we uh, evaluated this research so earlier research has clearly shown that there is an association of seeing smoking on screen and progressing to tobacco use and streaming platforms not complying with india's smoke free rules india's smoke free rules require that they have to give a warning they have to keep a message uh, which says uh, smoking is harmful to health none of those were followed when we evaluated this uh, study none of the seven uh, series which were showing smoking scenes complied with tobacco free film and tv rules so streaming platforms are another uh, area and medium which is the new media which is becoming a dangerous exposure for our adolescents in india next slide please uh this is a study uh, conducted by um, uh, uh, the kmc manipal group and uh, this included some of the kannad movies but other uh, regional movies of the south again we see very clearly there is violation of tobacco free film rules and the exposure is much higher in regional movies compared to national uh, movies which means we have to start immediately having a surveillance on these content and ensuring that tobacco free film rules are stringently implemented and adolescents are protected next slide please
Talking about industry tactics, um, again, we all have been uh, recording that industry has been influencing youth through various ways and means. But this was for the first time that we did a study to actually come up with a score on what is the tobacco industry interference in India. We studied all the newspaper clippings uh, and also looked at ministry and industry websites. And we found that for 2017, a report which was published in 2018, the score was 72 out of 100. So higher score actually means that industry interfer interference is on the higher side and we need to implement Article 5.3 of FCTC. This score was again evaluated for the next year and it has come down from 72 to 69. This is the frequency and severity of tobacco industry interference and the government's response to address it. So which means in India, we are getting better with our response to tobacco industry interference, but still there's a lot of scope for improvement as we are still at 69 and we have countries like Thailand and others which are at a score of 35. Next slide, please. These industry uh, uh, tactics and the TII score of India has been compared with other countries in Asia index. As you see on this, India is fourth from the bottom. And uh, we do have countries like Thailand in 2017 was 42. We can see on this score. Next slide, please. Next slide. And this is the score of 69. Uh, this is a very crowded slide, but we can see that India is uh, way up uh, in the above section and there are other countries uh, below. Can we go back to two slides? We have missed one slide. Yes, next slide. So I will now be talking about policies and programs. Next slide, please. Yes, I will quickly talk about some policies and programs which are protective. And this, this is again a result of our study with uh, KMC Manipal, which was done for all the schools in the ODP district in Karnataka, uh, trying to see compliance with tobacco-free school guidelines. And some encouraging results here, uh, tobacco-free school board was displayed at the entrance of 73% of the 915 schools, which we had evaluated but no smoking signage was observed in less than 1% of the schools. Uh, there was uh, absolutely no evidence that tobacco products were sold within 100 yards of uh, school. However, it was told that most of these products were available but were not visible uh, to the uh, evaluators. So they would not put it outside this, uh, and hang it uh, to make it attractive. It was all kept uh, under the table and it was available. Only 5% of the schools reported having tobacco control committee. 4% reported having copy of the COTPA Act in the school. But uh, integration of tobacco control activities in school health program was reported in 91% of schools, which was very encouraging. So uh, such kind of evaluations, I think, do help us to identify where are the areas of improvement. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, so what has the country done uh, in terms of protecting our children and adolescents? We all know that e-cigarettes were banned in India. And uh, because of that, uh, can we go back to the e-cigarette slide? Two slides ahead. I see on my screen uh, two earlier slides. Can we, yes, please, we'll be on this slide. Okay, um, I think I will speak from my screen because uh, the slides uh, are not in the appropriate order. So what we do see is that India brought about ban on e-cigarettes and in our um, Honorable Prime Minister's uh, address at the 74th session of the UN General Assembly, 
it was said that craze for e-cigarette is a matter of concern for us, due to which India has banned the commodity to save the youth from this very severe problem. So the whole reason for introducing e-cigarette ban in India was to protect our adolescents and youth, which was very encouraging. Uh, going further on, I would just like to highlight that youth are the change agents, as Dr. Murthy also said, and we should not just have them as pass passive recipient of our interventions. We need to engage them, empower them so that they understand these tactics and move towards tobacco-free future generations. This was a concept which was introduced in 2013 in India as a campaign no more tobacco in 21st century. This was a youth campaign launched by Indian youth, but it became international and uh, youth started writing appeals and making sure that there were policy interventions happening in their country. 85% pictorial health warnings in India were brought where youth played a very important role by conducting press conferences, signature campaigns, and getting international endorsements as well. Next slide, please. So what you see on screen is um, an article on uh, No More Tobacco in the 21st Century Campaign. Next slide. This was launched during the Endgame con Conference, which was hosted by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India in India. Um, in 2013. Um, this was, as I said, endorsed by various uh, celebrities, uh, cricketers, uh, Mr. Rahul Dravid, who became tobacco control brand ambassador for the government. Also, uh, youth, you see in the picture below, uh, the, uh, the youth were given uh, a passing of baton by the tobacco control experts at this conference saying that they should take lead on creating tobacco-free future generation. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide, please. So just to give some recommendations uh, to close my presentation in conclusion, we need to effectively enforce uh, our uh, Cigarettes and Other Tobacco Product Act to uh, protect children and adolescents, but we need to ensure that new media is particularly looked at. So section five or article 13 of FCTC should be implemented to prevent tobacco use exposure in entertainment and social media. Article 5.3, we need a national policy. As of now, we have subnational policy on 5.3 to ensure that we avoid conflict of interest by the industry. And in the current COVID times, we should be careful and not accept contributions as CSR, the Corporate Social Responsibility Act of the industry as giving PPE, ventilators and other support to the government at this time. On access and availability, we should restrict availability of traditional tobacco products in the COVID times as the government has done, understanding the threat of smoking and smokeless tobacco use, but completely prohibit availability of new emerging tobacco and nicotine products. And last but not the least, we need to meaningfully engage our youth to monitor the tobacco industry and protect themselves and create tobacco-free future generations. Next slide. Thank you. Stay safe and stay tobacco-free. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Monica. Uh, we have the next speaker. Uh, very important to us. I'm very glad uh, to introduce him that he joined us. From the government side, uh, Father Dr. Anthony Sebastian. So this is the second time that we are working with an important body from the government, the Child Rights Commission. So last night we got a uh, message that his department has been recognized one of the best by the Chief Secretary. So congratulations to you, Father Anthony. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Chandra, uh, for inviting me uh, to this great event. So, uh, yes. Uh, so, can we start? Thank you so much for uh, coming to our event. And our children will definitely visit you. They have articulated an excellent demand focusing on the theme. I'm sure they will visit you so, soon and you will respond positively. Uh, we look forward to that. So, uh, over to you now. Surely. Would you like to ask some questions? So how, would, how would you prepare this? Yes, as we planned, I will ask the questions in line with some of the speakers already, so you can respond. Yeah. Can I go ahead? 
please. Yeah, some of the gaps, one of the challenges now, there are laws, fairly good laws under the cigarette and other tobacco product tax. Uh, for example, cigarette products should not be sold within 100 meters. And then advertisement, there are loopholes in such laws. How can we address and what are your uh, advice to us and guidance? Yeah, I'll start with the assisting laws that is uh, available right now. There is a law in the narcotics. Can drugs. you start your video, please? Can you start your video, please? Okay, okay. Thank there you. you are. Thank you. The assisting laws are concerned. We have Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substance Act 1985 which prohibits cultivation of any tobacco-related items except for medical and science usage. Another thing, we have Convention on Tobacco Control. It's the first treaty negotiated under WHO. And India was one of the first few countries ratified in the year 2004. Again, we have prohibition of advertisement and regulation trade and commerce Production, Supply and Distribution Act 2003. Coming to children specific, we have Juvenile Justice Act 2015. Section 77, which talks about whoever provides or goes to provide tobacco related items shall be punishable with rigorous imprisonment up to seven years. Section 78, Juvenile Justice Act 2015 also talks about whoever use children to provide Peddling, vending, carrying, also punishable up to seven years. So that means we have laws in place. The important thing is how do we implement it? Uh, for example, we have state uh, sale of tobacco products near education institutions within 100 meters is prohibited, according to 6A of the Act. But tobacco retailers have assist near many education institutions. Yes. So how do we see that? It's important that we need to involve, engage education institutions, parents, and children, students, to, to, to take up this task. Because implementing this uh, items become very difficult. Uh, we know that the states very often fails to monitor these items. So the monitoring is also important and to make sure implementation is important. I think students' uh, clubs, you see we have a child rights clubs are supposed to be in every school under uh, RTE Act. And we have, uh, as a commission, we have visited so many schools across the state and we have found that many schools have not activated. It is there in the list, in the books, but it is not activated. The child rights clubs that we're talking about need to be activated and under this need to be strengthened. The students themselves need to come in front line. Of course, the parents, educations are important to make sure the implementation of act and its uh, provisions have been done. Sale of production to the minors up to 18 years is banned. But we can see that this happens, there is no control, there is no monitoring system whether a child can purchase and the sale should not have happened, but it's happening. I think there need to be a kind of uh, uh, law, perhaps uh, an amendment to that, with the age can be increased up to 21 years, just like other uh, alcohol things concerned. And that can perhaps bring some more, a little more uh, cross control and monitoring perhaps. Advertisement of tobacco product is banned according to section five of the act, but advertisements at the point of sale in the form of posters and products display is rampant. This is an enforcement challenge. So uh, I would think uh, law are in place but implementation is important. And who are the partners, stakeholders who must involve? This is very important. We leave it to state, to control, to monitor, will not be sufficient at present scenario. We need to engage with students. We need to engage with parents. We need to engage with education institutions. We need to create massive awareness on the 
negative impacts on this. Of course, commission is prepared to be part of this campaign and a commission commit with you that we can join you in this effort. Issues related to implementation, we can bring to the notice of the state and ask accountability from the commission. So commission, uh, of course, take this is as a serious uh, issue, especially among children. And the child, the, the, there are few agencies which can work out uh, what we call the child rights clubs, supposedly every school, that can get activated and that can bring these points and children themselves can come in front and see that the implementation of the acts are happening. Chandan, that's what I'd like to share with you. If you have any questions, perhaps you can ask me. You didn't say so the one of the thing that children will be visiting our office with one other with other uh, demands. One is that your thoughts I want you to share about. As we know that alcohol is less harmful to tobacco. I'm not promoting alcohol, but tobacco is more harmful. Another way uh, than uh, tobacco is more harmful than uh, al uh, alcohol. Whereas tobacco is tobacco can be sold by anyone anywhere with some restriction. Whereas alcohol is licensed. So children are requesting, are requesting the government to consider tobacco also to be brought under license. What are your thoughts on that? Of course, uh, this, uh, just like alcohol's uh, restrictions, this is much bigger and greater importance. And the commission is committed. Of course, when a delegation comes to the, to the commission, surely we'll take it up. And the commission right now we have a very strong team who believes in this, who are committed to this, and, the, and that team is very active in the field today. Uh, we have decentralized the commission into seven regional head offices, and each regional head office headed by the commission member and assisted by a, a, a coordinator and linked with the, all the departments. So therefore. Uh, Commission believes in it, commission is committed to this, and we are there with you, uh, whichever form that you like to uh, uh, be part of it. Thank you, Dr. Anthony. So we are privileged to have you as a chairperson. So we look forward to meeting you and then uh, exploring things with you. We will move on to the next speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. We'll move on to the next speaker. Our next speaker is, uh, Dr. Andrew Russell, Professor Andrew Russell is from the Department of Anthropology, University of Durham in UK. Recently, we both explored a work on the BD issue in a project that was not uh, we were not able to do that. But when I approached him for this, he was very happy to come on board. Uh, he has worked with children. That's important. Children in the production. That's an issue. He'll, he'll briefly address briefly address part of his presentation. Now over to Professor Andrew. Thanks very much, Chanda, and thank you everybody at the, for this wonderful opportunity to um, share with you today um, on this very important occasion. Um, I wanted to um, just uh, cover a few um, points about young people and tobacco use, but the main theme I want to focus on is that, um, particularly in a country like India, um, young people and tobacco production is also an important um, aspect. And I wanted to um, give you some insights from a project that um, I've been involved with in Tamil Nadu, um, involving uh, working with BD workers on the possibilities for alternative livelihoods. Um, back in 2002, the American um, academic and activist Stanley Glantz suggested on a, in a radio interview that the only way to stop young people smoking is to stop people smoking. And I think that's a very interesting sort of, maybe an insightful point that in fact, we should maybe to target young people, it could be counterproductive. It's important that we include young people in the general tobacco control programs that we initiate. So is there any justification for, in, for focusing on young people in particular. And we've heard today about, about some of the reasons why young people um, you know, might start to use tobacco. 
and the vested interest that the tobacco industry has in encouraging them to do so. Um, so for all these different reasons, there, um, there could be um, justification, but beware, the um, tobacco industry itself has been in the past been involved in some <clears throat> very um, persuasive youth smoking prevention initiatives. Um, here's an example on the bottom of the screen, RJ Reynolds company um, talking about right decisions right now, kids shouldn't smoke. Um, now this is, I think it was um, Monica talked about this corporate social responsibility the idea that um, the, the tobacco industry are the good guys discouraging young people from, from smoking, that it should be an adult thing to do. It's, um, it probably indicates that they're, they're a bad idea, these kind of um, youth targeted initiatives. They're certainly an excellent form of public relations for the tobacco industry because they're really following a hidden agenda if you think about it. The overt message that they're putting out is we don't want kids to smoke. Um, but the hidden message underlying that is that kids shouldn't smoke, but if you want to look like an adult, then go ahead and do it. Um, and similarly, with the kind of messages that say, resist your peers, don't smoke, um, there's a hidden agenda that everybody's doing it, um, which in fact is very much not the case when um, you, you undertake sort of uh, studies in this regard. I sometimes share with my students um, these two posters that are from Malaysia, um, in the 1990s, when um, British American Tobacco, in the guise of Dunhill, um, were sponsoring um, the presentation of uh, the English FA Cup in bars and um, restaurants across the country. At the same time, um, the Confederation of Malaysian Tobacco Manufacturers were off offering this um, poster on the right, um, sort of on top of the world without smoking. And I often say to the to students, well, if you were offered these two images, which person would you rather be? Would you rather be the goody two shoes on the right hand side, um, sort of dressed in, in uh, clean clothes, et cetera? Or would you, be the, would you rather be the exciting football players with lightning coming out of their bodies um, on the left hand side? So, um, so I think we, we have to be very careful about um, uh, sort of some of this overt kind of targeting. Um, and there's certainly a few messages I think or, or, uh, that we can take from um, research that's been done that very often in discouraging young people from smoking because of long-term health benefits um, often don't really work. An authoritarian tone tends to put off young people. But the thing that they do um, respond to very positively um, is that if they feel they're being manipulated by a company, by an industry, um, by an adult into doing something. So there are three examples I just want to briefly consider before I go on to the main sort of theme. Um, one is an exhibition in, in the South American country of Uruguay um, that went on. And the Florida Truth campaign is an example of a, um, a campaign which is focusing on industry tactics and also young people's advocacy groups, which um, are another way forward of, to involve young people in, in this um, sort of this, uh, ca these campaigns. Um, the Respira Uruguay exhibition was um, a very interesting exhibition, interactive exhibition designed for young people um, in the science um, education center, science museum, if you like, in the capital, Montevideo. Um, unfortunately, it's now closed because of um, lack of lack of money, but it was a very interesting um, uh, opportunity to in, um, give young people in an interactive and sort of friendly way, um, sort of information about the dangers of, of um, tobacco. Um, and they focus particularly on not only on the health dangers, but also the financial costs long term of um, tobacco involvement. It was visited by 80% of all school children in Uruguay because of the size and shape of the country. Um, and it, while we can't say that it had you know, tremendous impact, but as part of a much more sort of comprehensive program of tobacco control, um, smoking rates in Uruguay um, during the time of the exhibition um, did decline from 32% to 25%, with the greatest decrease in the age group 16 to 24. So maybe the exhibition was having some kind of impact. Um, young people's advocacy groups for tobacco control in the UK 
have been many and varied. Um, but again, the, the um, with the sort of period of austerity, they've uh, some of these um, no longer operating. The only one that I could actually see when I was checking through these um, links was the Deborah Hutton campaign with some very um, interesting um, film footage um, that's sort of encouraging uh, sort of young people to think about industry manipulation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so in terms of young people and tobacco use, um, I think Stanley Glantz is probably right. Young people should only be targeted with extreme caution. But on the other hand, if we only ever think, well, what's evidence? Um, would we ever try anything new and, and innovative, like maybe an exhibition space in Uruguay or um, a young person's advocacy group? Um, but the other word of caution is that um, targeting young people can also be quite resource intensive. The fact that the Florida Truth campaign was um, so effective was because it was receiving money out of the 1998 Master Settlement Agreement, which um, gave um, states in the United States um, money from the tobacco industry in lieu of um, a lot of uh, lit costly litigation um, because of the way that cigarettes had been marketed without any sort of health warnings. And as I said, so in the, in the UK, as far as I'm aware, most young persons advocacy groups are currently not operating, which I think is a great pity. So young people and tobacco production. I just wonder if you want to stop um, children from, um, from using tobacco, then stop everybody using tobacco. Is the same the case with if you want to stop children working in the tobacco industry, stop people working in the tobacco industry. And there are different stages of the production process where, in which children can be involved. Tobacco cultivation, but also later points in the production process. So, for example, in the Indian context, um, in the uh, BD industry. And um, the project we, we have been involved with over the last year has been doing participatory research with BD workers in Tamil Nadu, South India. Um, <clears throat> Now, it's interesting how many children are actually involved in tobacco um, production in India. It's estimated that 4% of the um, young people in, uh, in the BD industry um, are, are, are young people, 4% of um, the workers in the BD industry are young people. Um, tobacco cultivation, it's less. Um, the tender leaf pluckers, who are the, that's, those are the leaves that um, make up the BD um, cigarette, um, they're about 2.4%. Two, two this is based on some recent um, research that I came across, which is quite helpful. Um, so if we take those figures um, to be the case, that means there's about 144,000 um, child workers based in BD production in India. They may be not working full time in the industry and they may be helping out families um, sort of in the evenings when they could otherwise be doing school work or whatever. Um, anyway, we decided we wanted to, to look more into um, what uh, the possibilities for alternative livelihoods to um, BD, BD work in, in India. And um, I think it's very interesting to think about the um, the, the FCTC, as had been talked about before, and um, how it, um, the different sort of articles and what they, what they have to offer. I think it's exciting that the FCTC um, deals with production as well as consumption issues. Um, it does so through its particular article, Article 17, which is the provision of support for economically viable alternative activities. It's a very complex field. You're not just dealing with a behavior, you're dealing with a whole sort of um, way of life and livelihood. Um, the focus has generally been on tobacco cultivation rather than later stages of the manufacturing process. And um, the preoccupation, I would say, has been with large scale tobacco growing and processing, often by big sort of you know, transnational tobacco corporations. Um, and I wonder whether um, people, people think that, that BD production is maybe um, a different case, a different kind of um, scenario that needs to be looked at in its own sort of specific context. Um, so the, the, the idea of Article 17 um, to encourage alternative livelihoods could also be seen as a rather top down sort of initiative. Can we make it more bottom up by involving the people themselves in the, in the actual um, 
uh, its its implementation. <clears throat> so I probably don't need to to explain to to this audience that um, you know the, the kind of background to BD is, and it's um, the idea that um, the BD is maybe a rather Swadeshi sort of um, component of Indian sort of culture. It's certainly the main way that tobacco is smoked in India. Um, 81% of tobacco consumption, it's estimated, or tobacco smoking is through BD use. 90% um, of um, the 72 million people um, who use them being men. Uh, it's been described as the poor man's cigarette. <clears throat> On the production side, 90% of the BD rollers are women. And um, it's already been mentioned that, uh, you know, the, the earnings are, are, pr are pretty terrible. There's lots of opportunities for exploitation. There's lots of occupational health problems that affect the women themselves, the children and their families. And it's been a cottage industry since the introduction of the BD and Cigar Conditions of Employment Act in 1966, um, which um, encouraged the sort of devolution, if you like, of, of BD production from um, sort of organized production facilities into um, people's homes around the community. So um, we had money from the Global Challenges Research Fund um, with the PI Professor Sushil John from Christian Medical College Valour um, to look at um, the possible current and alternative livelihoods with BD workers um, in and around um, Valour and other parts of normal Tamil Nadu. Um, <clears throat> we were interested in taking this participatory approach and we were able to do that because of help from um, community health volunteers um, organized through the D. Arul Selvi Rehabilitation Trust in Tirupattur, and also colleagues in, in Praxis who provided um, training for um, the health workers on a pro bono basis. Praxis is a participatory institute um, based in Delhi. So using a five tool system, the health volunteers went out and talked to um, BD workers themselves asking questions like, well, who am I? What's my, what's my role in life? What's, what's the BD work that I do? Um, they did use the life history tool, um, a reasoning tool, asking people why they stayed in the BD work. And if they tried to quit BD work, what had happened? Um, and here are the different um, women that they were able to speak to in Tirupattur and Valur, um, 46 women in particular. And then we had um, focus groups afterwards. And there was wonderful translation and transcription work done by um, Mrs. Padmanabhan, um, which was absolutely fantastic. So here's an example of um, some of the, uh, the sort of discussions going on in with different um, people in Tirupattur. And I'll just, I won't dwell on the results because I want to focus particularly on, on the, the um, children aspect. But um, as you might imagine, it's not such a straightforward picture. Um, some people feel tremendously trapped in the um, BD industry. Other people see some sort of benefits and positive um, angles to it. Um, and people and, and the possibility for alternatives is very much um, context specific. It depends on the place where people are, are living in. So here's just some of the voices of the um, women that uh, we spoke to through this, through this work. Um, and the different sort of circumstances, the health problems that they were facing, um, how they got into BD work in the first place. Sumitra talking about um, being forced um, to drop out of school and learn BD rolling as a second generation worker. Um, the negative sides of it, just how difficult it is for people to, um, to escape and, and um, the tremendously long hours that they have to work and um, the difficulties that they face trying to um, get out of the uh, production process. Um, but on the other hand, some positives were expressed and um, alter people have tried different alternatives in different places. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's a quite complex sort of picture. Um, but in terms of children, the, the quotes that I've extracted from what people had to say um, this seemed to be a very common theme with amongst most of the um, women that we spoke with, um, that they really did not want their children going into this industry. Um, sometimes people said, well, their children were forced to help them in the evenings if they had extra beaders that they needed to roll. 
but they were very worried that um, the children might you know, be forced to um, continue with this work. I won't involve my children in this work, says Mala and Tirupatur. Um, on the other hand, some people were saying that you know, there was potential for um, sort of uh, using beady work to help educate the children, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's interesting that that, that sort of common theme coming out of it. We discussed these, these uh, things at a workshop that we held in Belo back in December. Um, this generated further sort of insights and support. Um, 11 BD rollers from Tirupatur and Belo were able to attend, um, and they had the demonstration of um, some craft work being undertaken by Paul Das and colleagues from, a, from an organization called ProVision um, in Karnataka, actually. And um, up following that, um, in uh, I think it was sort of March, there was a, um, a, a demonstration of different craft activities um, that um, Paul put on and 31 women um, attended the, um, the demonstration. And unfortunately, COVID-19 has put pay to further developments, but there's something, there's, there's sort of something in that and I hope we'll be able to return to that. So in terms of young people and tobacco production, just to summarize, um, they're involved in produ tobacco production at every stage of the supply chain in different places. Um, most BD workers are adamant they don't want their children entering the industry. And I do feel that if you want to stop children working in tobacco, then the way forward is to stop um, uh, people working in tobacco. And I think that people are ready for change if they can see options that make a real material difference to their lives. And I think that um, there's great scope for um, developing alternatives um, that are successful, that, that, that will sort of work for people. Um, but there is the problem of the, um, uh, the constant sort of um, supply of, of new people um, joining the workforce in India every month and how, um, how, how sort of opportunities to develop alternatives to BD, BD rolling um, might mean that simply new arrivals will take the place of those who leave. So we need to be careful about this. There's also a scope for much greater involvement of various health institutions like CMC Velour in outreach work with BD workers. So further questions that I have are things like, well, can initiatives like this one be scaled up? What other alternative livelihoods to BD rolling are there? What's the long-term future of the BD industry? Um, and do we support company diversification, as was talked about before, um, companies moving into different fields? Or do we support the abandonment of, um, of uh, sort of BD um, work and BD companies altogether? So thank you, everybody. Um, Danyavad Agalu and Danyavad. And I have a few um, acknowledgements of all the people who've helped um, put do this uh, thing together. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Andrew, for the insightful presentation. And uh, yeah, we need to work on the supply side, livelihood in the issue. So one question we always said, if uh, livelihood options are lost, we can find it. It's a challenge, but lives are lost. That's a concern. You can't replace. We'll move on to our core of the whole campaign is the key stakeholders are children, parents, and teachers. Let's listen to them. Apologies for extended time. All viewers, please stay on. Very, very good morning to everybody. My name is Aditya Hari. I am in the 12th grade and I study in Delhi Public School, Bangalore North. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how tobacco companies are influencing the lives of the younger generation of the world to its selfish life. The Consortium for Tobacco Free Karnataka has been persistently working towards the protection of children for a brighter and healthier future. The adolescent age is the peak of the human brain to experiment and be socially acceptable and tobacco companies have taken complete advantage of this. The penetration of smartphones and internet has only made them more vulnerable to these ill effects. They have warped these minds full of potential by introducing tobacco in new flavors and in new forms in order to make them more attractive. 
TV shows, social media influencers, movies, they have all convinced these young minds that in order to be marked cool or to be accepted among a group of people, you have to be smoking. Unfortunately, what they don't realize is their need to buy these products is because of this industry's shrewd marketing strategy. An industry whose product is in fact more addictive than heroin or cocaine. By sponsoring summer camps in school to spread misconceptions about ENDS, that's electronic nicotine delivery systems, is rapidly increasing. And that fact is very, very daunting. Times have changed rapidly. The world has not developed at a faster rate, and yet tobacco has been persistently tormenting humanity for centuries. We can put an end to that. You can make a difference for a brighter, beaming and healthier future. Let's support this admirable initiative by the Consortium for Tobacco Free Karnataka. Let's say no to tobacco. And with reference to the global pandemic we're facing today, I'd like to conclude just by saying, let's make a chain to break the chain. Thank you very much. Namaste. I am Dr. Rashmi Murthy, Consultant Pediatrician, Raghava Child Clinic, with special interest in adolescent health. But today, I speak with the bigger designation of being a mother of two children aged 8 and 11 who attend Little Flower Public School. The issue of tobacco menace has plagued us for many years. It has been shown that long-term dysfunctional substance abuse problem is greatest when it starts below the age of 15 years, which is our school-going age group. They are at a very impressionable age. When there is an identity crisis, they are trying to build a self-image and media has a very powerful influence on our children. Any famous personality or character showing off one cigarette or a smoking scene or a drinking scene on TV or movies, irrespective of the innumerable caution or statutory warning messages that are sent across, but even one such scene is enough for our children to think that it is very cool or fashionable to do something similar. Apart from educating our individual child, making him or her responsible in not getting into these habits, we have a bigger responsibility, a social responsibility to raise our voice against the tobacco menace. Very rarely do we hear parents or teachers raising their voice against these issues. It's mostly the NGOs and other such organizations, public health organizations, which are working against the tobacco menace. So I urge and request all parents to kindly raise your voice and give a hand and support for the Consortium for a Tobacco-Free Karnataka so that we leave a slightly better world for our children than the one we spent our childhood in. All the best. Thank you very much. Camps Karnataka, a biggest state private unaided school organization. We are definitely with the tobacco free drive. We want entire Karnataka schools, its students to be free from this menace. We always demanded along with the consortium for tobacco free in Karnataka in associate with these people we are also together to protect our children. We want government of Karnataka to initiate certain measures, certain demands to be looked into, call upon the stakeholders, have a dialogue with them and see that you and we together, we will protect our students, our children of this society. We, Camps Karnataka, Private School Association, we are with the consortium to fight for this entirely. Hi everyone, I am Dr. Anand Lakshman. Uh, I am the founder of Address Health. Address Health works with schools in providing health services to children in schools. Uh, today I would like to talk a little bit 
about an industry which carefully nurtures its clients because the clients are quite uh, dedicated and faithful to it once they are hooked on. If an industry like this were to look at nurturing new clients, where would they look for? They would like to catch them young. And that's what happens with tobacco. If the tobacco industry is able to lure young children and youth and the adolescents uh, with the promise of a great uh, experience or something which they are looking for thrill in life and they get them hooked on, then they have faithful customers for life because you know it's a difficult habit to kick. And that's why the effort needs to be made to make sure that young children, uh, adolescents and the youth need to be protected from the manipulative advertising methods and the various things that the tobacco industry would try to lure them young. And we have to run a counter campaign to be able to educate these children on the ill effects as well as why it's not cool. It's important for us to counter the message by really saying why it's not cool to be with tobacco. Friends, you know that the destiny of any country is in the hands of youth and child. A child is the center. It is full of curiosity. A child is sent to school for all-round development, mental, physical, moral and emotional. A child ultimately has to become a useful citizen of society. He should not be lured by bad habits. Unfortunately, the tobacco lobby has been so strong that children are being lured. Unfortunately, the media, the advertisements are being followed by the child, not for its good, for its negative developments. On the eve of No Tobacco Day 2020, I call upon the students' fraternity, the teachers, the parents to join hands and support the consortium for Tobacco Free Karnataka. Good afternoon. Asha Foundation is an organization working in the field of HIV and AIDS for the last 20 years. Adolescent health education is one of our programs and we provide this both for children in schools and for out of school youth. Smoking and its ill effects in children is one of the topics that we address in these programs. I would like to use this opportunity to appeal to students, parents and teachers to support the campaign of preventing the use of tobacco among children. Today, tobacco and tobacco products are easily available to children. Children as young as 18 or even younger are using tobacco. Even though there are laws governing the use of tobacco in our country, they are not strictly enforced. So I appeal to all stakeholders to support this cause so that our children can stay safe, stay healthy and stay free from the ill effects of tobacco use. Thank you. My dear young friends, in today's situation, no one wants to be contracted with coronavirus. But one good thing about coronavirus is that our bodies may fight it out. Although the infection enters our lungs and attempts to take out our life, the mortality rate in India is little less than 3%. But tobacco smoking, chewing and sniffing do not give any such guarantee. Of all the deaths reported in India, tobacco has a share of about 9.5% every year. The tobacco industry thrives on denying the rights of children. Tobacco products kill not only the direct users, but give the children orphaned. Once, 
the old tobacco users die, the industry wants new users to come in their place. They are looking for new children and are trying to trap them as young as possible. For the industry, it is only money. They are not interested in the welfare and growth of the children, health of the children, and nutrition of the children. Tobacco is a slow killer, and every child, every family should realize this and say no, a strong no to tobacco and tobacco products. Yeah, I would like to thank all the speakers for their excellent presentation. Due to extended presentation, unfortunately, we do not have the time for Q&A, &A, but we would encourage, please send your Q uh, questions. We will integrate, we are going to upload the video on YouTube. So we will add your question and answers in the YouTube link. So kindly send your questions. So where do we go from here? So we want action. So our little children are already onto action. Let's, uh, we'll conclude by listening to what they are planning. Along with Aditya, the four other children, two girls are joining and they are going for a first action, the 1 million signature campaign. Next slide. Let's go on. Please show the slide. Oh, okay. So their demands are this. A strict implementation of tobacco control laws, we have already shared, and increase the age to 21 important for purchasing tobacco product. It's the new policy chain they're asking for. And stricter implement advertisement, we also spoke about, they want that. And restrict the sale of tobacco products to licensed and exclusive shops only, and not to confuse them by selling tobacco product to other consumables. These are the demands. Uh, they want 1 million signature. So the battle goes on. So we started this campaign, Tobacco Free Children, in 2017. And then last year, we had an, uh, that's, that's a photo on the top is with the former chairperson of the Child Rights Commission receiving a memo from children. And this is last December, we had 19, 2019 December, we had another event for children. So uh, they want your support for this this slide, so please share this, we'll share. Yes, this is the one. We will conclude with this, the action by children for a 1 million signature, which is submitted to the Chief Minister of uh, the state. Please share with your network and support our children in their action. And I would like to thank all the speakers and all the other special invitees, our partners of consortium, for sharing your time and then your valuable thoughts during this webinar. And I would like to thank Dr. Pratima Murthy for extending this excellent facility here that we could comfortably do this uh, webinar today. And for our colleagues here who helped us with various system, Arabindo for uh, your excellent support. And I also would like to thank the Maya team headed by our CEO, Mr. Alex Rodriguez and my colleague Jitin and John and their friend for supporting us with setting up this webinar. Thank you all. Uh, we Unfortunately, we could not have uh, time for Q&A. Uh, I, what I feel is uh, where do we go from here? One with our children, another webinar, we'll, we'll ask our children to speak. Let's all listen to them. We look forward to this webinar in the near future. Thank you. Please support us. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks very much. And thank, thank you all. Thank you yes. also to uh, Jitin for the technology.